Close your eyes, focus on your breath. When the breath comes in, know the breath is coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. And keep reminding yourself to stay right here. You don't have to think about anything else. And don't let anything else distract you. The sound of the generator, the sound of people talking, that's just their business. It's not your business. As John Cha once said, it's not that sounds disturb us. We disturb the sounds. We have to make commentary on them and talk about how good or how bad they are or whatever. And really, we don't have to. It's totally voluntary. And when it's voluntary and yet we're causing ourselves suffering, why should we do it? This is why we need to develop good, strong qualities of mindfulness, alertness. Every good quality of the mind is something that protects us from causing unnecessary suffering, unnecessary suffering for ourselves, unnecessary suffering for the people around us. You probably noticed the, the chant we had just now, taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha. It's important to understand what that means. It's not like the Buddha is going to save us or the Dharma or the Sangha is going to save us. They're good examples for how people can behave in a way that goes beyond suffering, that can put an end to suffering for their minds and to lessen the suffering of the people around them. And so we take them as examples and we look in our minds to see if we have the same qualities they have. And if we don't, then we can develop those qualities. The Buddha never said he was anybody special. He was a human being just like us when he started out. But he took his human qualities and he turned them into something special. <laughs> in the same way that we can turn our minds into something special, too. So try to develop your mindfulness so that it's special. Try to develop your alertness, your concentration, your discernment. Try to develop your compassion so that it's special. And that way you develop a refuge inside. It's like taking the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha and putting them in your mind. That's where you can truly depend on them. Because if you take refuge in things outside, you don't, never know when they're going to run away or when you're going to be separated from them. But if you build qualities into your mind, then they're there, wherever the mind goes, that those good qualities go along with it. So in this way we, we become our own refuge inside, because we have the kind of qualities that we can depend on. If we can't depend on ourselves, who are we going to depend on? You look around you and it's a bunch of other people and they can't depend on themselves. And as for other things outside, other forces outside that, they're even more uncertain. The only thing that's certain is what you build into the mind. And if we're looking for a certain happiness, a quality that's special, a quality that's certain, okay, that's what we have to build those things in our minds. And that way they'll never leave us. So this way you develop your own refuge inside by taking the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as your example. They looked for true happiness and they found it through their own actions. And again, it's not because they started out as somebody special. No, but it's because they took what they had and made it into something special. You want your mindfulness to be special. You want your discernment to be special. So give some special attention to this practice of training the mind, because that's where your real refuge is going to be found. <laughs>